finding tools in CNC and CAM is uh, it's pretty fundamental. But the tools in FreeCAD Path have had some serious limitations for quite a while. Uh, in the version 0.19 that's coming up, the tool system is getting a pretty significant overhaul. In this video, I'm going to go through the differences between the new and the old system and give you everything you need to get started using Toolbits. A lot has changed in the new system, and if you've already used PATH in the past, it's easy to get confused between them. So I'm going to use different terminology. I'll refer to the old system either as tools or as legacy tools. The new system uses the term toolbit, and that's the word I'll use here. And I'll define all these terms a little bit better in just a minute. But before we get into that, let's talk about what hasn't changed at all. In an older video, I talked about tool controllers and explained how they're used. If you haven't watched that video, I'll leave a card up above. I recommend you watch that. But to summarize, the tool controller specifies how the tool should be used uh, for an operation. Uh, or multiple operations. It has properties that control the spindle speed and direction and also the feed rate, both vertical and horizontal. It also has the tool number that will be included in the g-code for a tool change, uh, which is particularly important if you're doing automatic tool changing. But that's about as far as the similarity goes. Almost everything else about uh, tools or tool bits uh, has changed. And uh, let's start with the user interface. The new system has two different dialogues. Each of these is optimized for a different use case or a different step in the process. The first dialog is probably the one you're going to use the most often. It's the tool bit selector or the dock. The dock is how you pick specific tool bits from your collection and create tool controllers in the job for them. Unlike the tool table in the legacy system, the dock is not modal. This means it can remain open on the screen while you're doing other things. When you need a tool controller in your job, just double click on a node in the list. Or you can select one or more tool bits and use the Add to Job button. Control A will select all the tool bits in the list. Have you ever started creating an operation and realized that you don't have the tool controller that you need? Now that the dock isn't uh, modal, if you find that you need a tool controller that you don't already have in the job, you can just open the dock and create the tool controller right in the middle of the process of creating the operation. Creating a new tool controller at this point will automatically assign it to the operation. The easiest way to open the dock is with the button on the toolbar, but that probably isn't the fastest. Using the keyboard shortcut PT will toggle the state of the dock, as will the button on the toolbar. So if it's open, it'll close, and if it's closed, it'll open. And that's really all you can do with the dock. You can't create or edit or manage your tool bits in any way. The dock is optimized for using them in the context of creating your operations and jobs. To manage the tool bits, you need to open up the Toolbit Library Manager. You can launch the Library Manager either from the Path menu or by clicking this button in the top right of the dock. Unlike the dock, the Tool Library Manager is modal. Uh, it's expected that you're going to use this for the task of managing your tool bits and libraries. Here's where you're going to do all of your creation, editing, rearranging, deleting, but you can't create the tool controllers from here. The Toolbit system has the concept of a working directory. The working directory is shown in the title bar of the library manager. The left side pane contains a list of all of the tool libraries that are in the working directory. The current library is highlighted and the tools in that library are shown in the right side pane. The selected library becomes the default when the manager is closed and the default is the one that's shown in the dock. Buttons on the far left allow you to change the working directory, create new tool libraries, or export the current library to other formats. The library pane is sortable by clicking on the column headers, and double clicking in the left column of a particular tool bit lets you set the default number that will be used when a tool controller is created. If you wish, you can even have multiple tool bits that have the same tool number. Double clicking anywhere else in the row will open the Toolbit Editor. The Toolbit Editor has two tabs, one for editing the geometric attributes of the toolbit, 
and the other for editing every other attribute that's non-geometric. One attribute that's particularly useful is the spindle power. Enable it and set the value to false and this will prevent the spindle from turning on when this tool is loaded. If you want to understand why this is useful, click on the card above and watch the video all the way till the very end. While a tool bit is being edited, the rest of the controls in the library manager are disabled. When you click OK, the results will be saved and the rest of the library manager will be reactivated. The buttons on the top of the Tool Library Manager allow you to create new tool bits and add or remove existing tool bits from the library. Now let's talk about how all this information is stored because honestly that's one of the most important attributes of the new system. The old legacy system stored the information about uh, tools and libraries in the FreeCAD parameter system. Uh, this was pretty convenient, but uh, it had some problems, particularly if you blew away your FreeCAD configuration, you were losing all of your uh, tool definitions as well. In the new system, uh, all this information is stored as separate files on the file system. These files can be easily backed up, um, but they can also be put on a shared directory, like a Dropbox directory or a network directory, so you can get to them from multiple computers at the same time. I usually do design work on this computer here in my office, but when I'm setting up the jobs or, or using the CNC machine, I'm up in the shop. Uh, with a, on a different computer and so it's really been nice to be able to access the same uh, set of tool definitions and libraries from both places. Tool bits and tool libraries are human readable text files. Uh, they're formatted as JSON, that's JavaScript object notation, uh, but they're very easy to understand if you open them up in a text editor you can look at the structure. They are JavaScript but they have unique uh, file extensions uh, .fctb for the FreeCAD tool bit and .fctl for the FreeCAD tool library. The tool library structure is very simple. It's just a list of tool bit files and the numbers that go with them. The tool bit file is a little bit more complicated but it's still pretty straightforward and uh, easy to understand what each of the fields means. Now one thing that you need to pay attention to is that both of these files refer to other files. The tool library file refers to a tool bit file and the tool bit file refers to a tool shape file. And we're going to get to tool shapes in a minute. Now because these files refer to other files, their location is kind of particular. These references can either be absolute, meaning it's the fully qualified path or the complete path to the file or it can be a relative reference. You can choose between the two different ways of storing the tool reference information in the Path Preferences dialog on the Tool section. Relative naming is the default because it's a little bit easier to move tools from place to place as long as you keep the entire directory structure intact. But if you're using relative naming, it's important that you use a unique name for your tool bits and especially for your tool shapes. So to keep things tidy, it's best to create a directory, uh, for instance, we'll call it uh, Tools, and it should have three subdirectories under it, one called Bit, one called Shape, and one called Library. So if you look at the working directory and the default tool bits that come with FreeCAD, you'll see that they're in exactly this organization on the disk. Now you're free to use those uh, if you wish, but be warned that any changes you make could be overwritten on the next upgrade. So for that reason, I recommend you create your own tool location and keep your tool bits and libraries there. And as long as you follow this naming convention, you won't have any problem. With all these files stored separately on the disk, you might wonder whether your project files will keep working if your uh, tool bit files are lost or moved or you might wonder whether you can share your project file with somebody else without also sharing your tool bits and uh, shape files. The answer to both of those is a qualified yes, mostly. In the new system, the tool bit is a regular document object. When you create a tool controller with a tool bit, the tool bit will appear in the tree nested underneath the tool controller. You can toggle the visibility of the tool bit object in the tree to see the geometric shape that it has in the 3D window. 
the tool bit properties can be edited just like they can through the tool library manager. But in this case, you're only editing a local copy and changes made here will not affect your permanent copy in your library. But, and this is important, you can only edit the tool bit in the tree if the shapefile is known. It's the shapefile that causes the geometric shape to be uh, computed and stored in the document. So if the shapefile isn't there, or isn't where FreeCAD expects it to be, then you can't edit the geometric properties. Now I've mentioned shapefiles several times. Well, what are they? Well, let's take a look at that. Shapefiles are just FreeCAD documents that model the physical shape of the tool. They do have to be configured in a particular way to work with the rest of the Toolbit system, but like any other FreeCAD document, you can open it, browse it, and look at how it's put together. I'm not going to go into the details of creating a custom tool shape in this video. That's a little bit of an advanced topic, and I want to give it its own video at a future date. Fortunately, FreeCAD already has uh, shapefiles created for the most common kinds of tools that you're likely to use, particularly rotary tools like end mills, ball end, bull nose, V cutters, and, uh, and probe. Now, being able to model the tool and show it on the screen is great, but that doesn't mean that we can automatically use that shape to control how a path is generated. That computation of the toolpath is still a responsibility of the operation and nothing that I've talked about in this video affects how operations work. Now some of the operations in FreeCAD can use specific cutter shapes, uh, but there's still the exception. Uh, for instance, the new V-Carve can use a V-Cutter and the shape of the V-Cutter uh, will uh, contribute to how the path is calculated. Also, some of the surfacing operations can use ball cutters and uh, um, cylindrical cutters and bullnose, and it makes a difference which kind of tool you use. But most of the operations in FreeCAD still assume that the cutter is a regular cylinder, and they're just using simple offsetting to generate the toolpath. Now, I'm really excited about uh, what Toolbit does for us, how it opens the door for some future development that we've wanted to do for a long time. Uh, particularly, this opens the door for lathe tools and lathe toolpaths. So Toolbits have now been merged into the master branch of FreeCAD 0.19 and are ready to try out. If you're doing a new installation of FreeCAD, it should be the default uh, and you'll be using it without having to do anything else. If you've been using FreeCAD and and path and are upgrading, you may need to go into the path preferences and make sure that use legacy tools is not turned on. Now Toolbits is no longer an experimental feature, but it is a new feature. So please make sure that you back up your Toolbits and your libraries on a regular basis. There's likely to be some bugs and hiccups until we get things smoothed out. If you find anything like that, please come out to the forum and leave a comment there. Uh, the YouTube comments are a pretty tough place to do tech support since we can't attach pictures or anything like that. Well, I hope you found that interesting, and as always, thanks for watching. So this is the place in the video where somebody would say it's sponsored by those people that send out food or that VPN company, but this video is sponsored by nobody at all. Uh, Path keeps getting better because a lot of good developers are contributing to it. And if you like what I'm doing here or you like this kind of content, I encourage you to go to my Patreon page and support me there. I'll leave a link down below or buy a book. And if you like FreeCAD, but Path isn't your cup of tea, uh, please consider sponsoring one of the other developers. There are quite a few who have Patreon pages now. Nobody's getting rich on this, but we all have a powerful need to eat, and the development slows down when the coffee runs out. So if it's something you can do, please consider it. Thanks.